It's the beginning of a new era in Western Europe, and you could feel it in the air the moment the Cosmic Girl touched down. I was so privileged to be part of that crowd, and it wasn't a small crowd, by the way, who were waiting for a 747 to land, which under normal circumstances wouldn't be a very big deal, but under these circumstances, it was one of the biggest events in spaceflight, at least for Europe, and really, in my opinion, opinion for the world. The reason I believe that is because Virgin Orbit is about to do something that nobody else has ever done. Demonstrate that they're going to be capable of deploying satellites and other payloads up to low Earth orbit and beyond on demand from just about anywhere in the world as long as some simple infrastructure is set up at a small airport like this one. And this mission is going to be the test, the acid test, shall we say, for Virgin Orbit's entire business model. If it succeeds, then all of the other prospective customers that they have right now in Brazil and Australia and Japan and elsewhere are going to be signing up in droves. But if it fails, this could be the beginning of the end, not only for Virgin Orbit, but for everything that Spaceport Cornwall has worked for for so long for all of these years. Breaking news here on Martin Lucas Investor. The saddest of news has come. The news that we've been all fearing for a, uh, a while now. And uh, here it is. What are we going to do? Virgin Orbit has collapsed. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to a rather grim episode of The Angry Astronaut. This really shouldn't come as a surprise to any of us at this point, given all of the news that we've been hearing lately about Virgin Orbit, but their operations have completely collapsed. The vast majority of the employees are being laid off, apparently being given severance packages, their benefits being extended, the sorts of things that lots of employees in this kind of situation don't always get. And also, some of them are apparently being found jobs at Virgin Galactic and also some sort of jobs pipeline being set up to place them in employment throughout uh, the Los Angeles area, um, where there is a large amount of space flight and space-related organizations still in existence. Of course, SpaceX being one of those. Um, so it appears that Virgin Orbit is doing their best to do right by their employees. But... As uh, those of you, those of you who watched the introduction here, uh, I predicted a number of times that if Virgin Orbit suffered an anomaly on the first ever orbital launch attempt, commercial orbital launch attempt anyway from Western Europe, that the end would come thereafter. They really couldn't afford to have an anomaly in that particular situation. Their entire business model depended on proving that they could launch from anywhere in the world, but more importantly, their cash flow situation wasn't the greatest at the time anyway. And if they had succeeded, if that launch and those satellites lights had actually been successfully deployed, I'm confident that they would have found the funding that they needed. But shoulda, woulda, coulda. And by the way, if you're wondering why I'm sans sunglasses, well, this is a very serious thing. And I think that uh, little gimmicks like sunglasses are just not appropriate to this type of episode. So what does all of this mean? I mean, what sort of impact is this going to have on all of the spaceports around the world who are planning to do business with Virgin Orbit? And also, more importantly, what does this mean about Richard Branson? Because he has been strangely silent and out of the public eye for a very long time now. So before we talk about Spaceport Cornwall and some of the other spaceports around the world that are doubtlessly going to be impacted about this, it's best to talk about what really has happened here. Has Virgin Orbit completely gone out of business? Well, not exactly. They've eliminated all but 100 positions, indicating that either they're going to try to rebuild in the future, or they've simply retained that staff in order to more efficiently close down operations and 
trying to sell or to liquidate all of its remaining assets, because it's important to note that the recent funding infusions that Virgin Orbit has been receiving from Richard Branson's Virgin Group has been dependent and actually secured by all of the equipment, all of the rockets, the Cosmic Girl, everything else that Virgin Orbit owns. So it could be that they're simply retaining those employees in order to get rid of all the property so that they can repay Richard Branson and his Virgin Group. It's hard to really say, and this is what Dan Hart, the CEO of Virgin Orbit, had to say. Quote, Unfortunately, we've not been able to secure the funding to provide a clear path for this company. We have no choice but to implement immediate, dramatic, and extremely painful changes. Probably the hardest all hands that we've ever done in my life. This company, this team, all of you mean a hell of a lot to me, and I have not and will not stop supporting you, whether you're here on the journey or if you're elsewhere. In addition to that, it was mentioned that Virgin Orbit would be providing a severance package for every departing employee with a cash payment, extension of benefits, and support in finding a new position, perhaps with Virgin Galactic. So these are the kinds of benefits, as I said before, that lots of employees in this situation don't get. Virgin Orbit appears to be trying to do right by their people, which is something that I really observed happening when I talked to all of their employees in Cornwall. Really, it seemed like a company that had a high level of morale, a significant amount of loyalty, and also a lot of professionalism and competence. I was very impressed with all of the technicians, the engineers, really everybody associated with this company left me deeply impressed with their corporate culture, but that wasn't enough to save it. Virgin Orbit was in the process of an aggressive expansion last year that was frankly sapping away their revenues. They were counting on a public offering to raise over half a billion dollars, and it raised less than half of that. At the same time, Virgin Orbit was planning to add four new aircraft to their fleet, giving them the capability of launching from spaceports all over the world without having to ship Cosmic Girl all over the world. It was a good plan if they had limitless funds. And frankly, I kind of thought that they did have limitless funds and Richard Branson wouldn't let them collapse, even if the worst happened, but that was not the case. Virgin Orbit spent too much, too fast in an environment that seemed too optimistic and too loaded with investors who are willing to put their money behind private space flight. Had Virgin Orbit succeeded with their launch from Spaceport Cornwall, as I said before, I am confident that they would have found an investor somewhere, successfully launching from Western Europe for the first time in human history is something that investors would have been powerless to ignore. However, the anomaly left them in a terrible situation, which they simply could not recover from. After a couple of investors who frankly had sort of shaped backgrounds fell through, Virgin Orbit was left with nothing and with no choice but to shutter their doors and to lay off almost everybody. But what about Spaceport Cornwall? What's going to happen to them? Well, surprisingly, there have been a number of positive things developing there. This is unquestionably a setback for Spaceport Cornwall and for UK spaceflight. However, Mel Thorpe, an hour before I made this recording, had the following to say, quote, we are saddened to hear the news from Virgin Orbit. We wish the very best for all of the team who have been affected. Spaceport Cornwall continues to operate with no direct impact to the team or project. As the UK's only licensed spaceport, we continue to grow the space cluster in Cornwall through developing future launch operations, opening a new facility to support global space and satellite businesses, and inspire local school children into STEAM through our outreach program. And I I don't believe that this is just a bunch of propaganda. The Space Launch Genie cannot be put back in the bottle in the United Kingdom, and this became very clear when new figures came out from the UK Space Agency showing that the UK's space industry is now thriving with over 48,000 employees and their space sector income up by almost one billion pounds far more than the entire operation at Spaceport Cornwall is even worth. So that being the case, 
there is a lot of business still going on with UK space, and a lot of that is focused around Spaceport Cornwall because Melthorpe and her team were wise enough to build an entire space cluster around the spaceport that have nothing to do with Virgin Orbit. And that being the case, the business and the opportunities at the spaceport continue to grow. And by the way, Virgin is not divorced from this process. Virgin Galactic, not Virgin Orbit, are going to be the guest speakers in a space recruitment workshop taking place tomorrow on April 1st of 2023. And no, that's not an April Fool's joke. So in my opinion, because Spaceport Cornwall had so much time and so much investment to broaden the spectrum of space opportunities that exist in that region that allowed them to absorb this setback and still move forward. I see no evidence to indicate that this spaceport is going to close down or that operations in Cornwall are going to collapse because of this setback. Now, if this had happened a few years ago when the spaceport was still in growth mode, it would have been a lot more devastating. But now, as I said, the genie cannot be put back in into the bottle. However, this could be a lot more serious for the growing spaceports in Brazil, Australia, and Japan that also had established relationships with Virgin Orbit and are not quite so far along in their development process. I really haven't interviewed any of these people, but I intend to try very soon and I'll keep you guys up to date. But Finally, I think the most important thing that we need to try to take away from this event is what is happening with Richard Branson. As I mentioned in a previous video, I'm not going to speculate about this man's health, especially given the fact that he was just cross-country skiing above the Arctic Circle not that long ago. I don't think I could do that, and I'm certainly not going to be able to do that when I'm over 70 years old. But he's been increasingly out of the public eye ever since this historic flight with Virgin Galactic. Richard Branson is becoming increasingly disconnected from his spaceflight-related company. I mean, I saw the man on the tarmac during the Tubular Bells mission flying out of Mojave less than two years ago. He seemed very active, he seemed very engaged, he seemed very enthusiastic about what Virgin Orbit was doing. However, when Virgin Orbit was preparing to make the first ever orbital launch attempt from Western Europe from his home country, Richard Branson was nowhere to be seen. Now, it's possible that he was concerned about the threat of COVID because he had actually caught COVID at the beginning of 2022, or it may have been something else, but it was very strange to see a recorded message from this man as opposed to some sort of live stream connection with him while this amazing event in his home country was going on. Time and again during my visits to Cornwall, we were expecting to see Sir Richard at some point, at least with some sort of live stream connection, some sort of live communication to the people trying to make this historic launch, again from Great Britain, where the guy is from, and yet nothing was ever seen. Now, this could either mean that he's really trying to divorce himself from his spaceflight related companies, or perhaps he's just trying to focus on his personal life and his life on the island where he's decided to make his home, trying to spend time with his family. It's hard to say what the man is actually dedicated to right now, but one thing is certain. He's not making any public statements about his spaceflight-related companies, especially Virgin Orbit. And once again, I find this to be very odd. Virgin Orbit is Richard Branson's only company that's managed to make it to orbit four straight times. They've taken care of the needs of quite a number of different companies and have deployed dozens of satellites into orbit unlike most other private spaceflight companies. And yet, he's had so little to say about what they've been doing for a considerable amount of time, and I just can't help but wonder why. But I'm really not going to speculate as to what might be going on with him. What I do know is that he has remained active. He's been on camera recently, so he seems to be okay health-wise. But the fact that he's had nothing to say about this grim event and has essentially left everything to Dan Hart... That is not the Sir Richard Branson I'm familiar with. So we'll find out, hopefully in the future, what's going on with him. But nevertheless, 
What does this mean for Virgin as a spaceflight related company? Well, I personally think that it's highly unlikely that Virgin Orbit is going to be able to recover in any sort of meaningful way. Virgin Galactic still has a promising future ahead of it if it can successfully take humans into suborbital space this year. I think investors are going to run out of patience with Virgin Galactic if they don't manage to pull this off soon. But if that does transpire, Virgin at least has some kind of future in spaceflight, which is more than I can say for some other companies who are struggling to get to orbit right now and quite possibly never will. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, please hit those notification bells so you can hear about every video I put out, regardless of what the algorithm might say, and also please check the description for various ways to support my content as I continue to travel and cover these ongoing events, and as always, stay angry about space!